and here we go. This demonstration is how to create um, lines. It's step number four, how to create lines on a conch shell. Um, there's a different video of how to create um, the lines on an orange um, shell, and you can apply that to any um, other distinct markings um, on a shell. But this one is a little bit more difficult, so I felt like I needed to do a separate video for this. Um, I just, I didn't shade this entire shell, but for the purpose of demonstration, I shaded this part of the shell, okay? I'm going to put in some yellow to show the highlights, and before you start putting in your marks, or those brown growth lines on your shell, you really want to make sure that your shell is turning in space. If you're not happy with the way your cool color looks in your shaded areas, then my recommendation is to mix in a 30% warm gray into your, um, into your shadow areas, or if you, have a, if you have a light shell, and if you have a dark shell, mix a 50% uh, cool gray in with your um, shadow areas, okay? So, I'm looking at the shell, and basically what you want to do is put in some lines that will really help you see the form. As you get into the back towards the tail, you could put an overcoat of color of that stripe. and blend that in without making every individual line. The reason you don't want to put every individual line in is because it will give you a sense of depth and it will help your shell look three-dimensional. As you get closer to you or the front of the shell, <laughs> start in with replicating some of those lines. Now, I'm not counting the lines. I'm not going crazy with any of that. It's hard to talk and do this at the same time. But I'm following the cross contour lines. It really helps you to show the form of your shell. Like, I'm really loving how this part looks right here. And obviously, behind this line, the stripes kind of are tucked in. I'm pressing very, very lightly. Once you get the gist of it, putting in these stripes are kind of fun. Okay. And I'm kind of like shooting some of these lines like back into space and coloring in what I have very, very lightly so that my cool and warm colors show through. 
Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is put in some highlights over my warm stripes. And some black, which I want you to do tomorrow, don't do it today because I'll have the black colored pencils, over your cool area stripes. And I'll show you what that's going to look like. So we actually have a bunch of blacks up there if you need them. Now, you don't want to put Splenda Blender over your stripes. Because basically what will happen is you'll blend in your stripes with everything else and it could get a little muddy. I'm going in and I feel like my highlights are too yellowy. So because the Prismacolor markers blend in really, really well, I'm drawing in between some of my stripes here and blending in some of that bright yellow. The cool thing is, in the last stages of this project, you can go in as heavy as you want with your colored pencils. Don't worry about applying those light lines anymore. And I'm just going to continue to blend. But not with my Splendor Blender because I don't want to smudge in the stripes. And then I'm going to take my cool gray Blend that in.
and just like that. Again, for demonstration purposes, I haven't taken the time to do the font, but you would basically repeat, just getting your highlights and your shadows in.